So this past weekend, one of my favorite movies of all time, Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan, turned 35. Hey, that's my age. Actually, this month, several classic movies turned 35. I might be doing a number of retro reviews this month. But with that said, let's talk about it. So Star Trek II is obviously the second Star Trek movie, but less obvious, it's not really a sequel to Star Trek The Motion Picture, it's much more a follow-up to an episode of the original series called Space Seed. In the plot of this movie, the villain of that episode comes back to exact wrath and revenge on Kirk, who he believes wronged him by leaving him on a planet, which is how the episode Space Seed ends. So in this, essentially you have a Kirk, who's now become Admiral Kirk, facing the consequences of the choices he's made, the life that he's lived, and kind of encountering a bunch of things in a way that is, for me, the best of Star Trek. This is the best thing that Star Trek has given us. So with all that said, let's talk about the good. What really makes this movie work is that it's not so much about the plot, which itself is very captivating. It's very much about the journey you're taking with Captain Kirk and this group of people he's been doing life with for now 15 years since the series started. And through that, because this, this movie is a sequel to not just the previous movie, but to a TV series, there's such a long history with these characters. We've spent so much time with them and seen them on so many adventures. We know them so well that you can tell stories, and in this case, tell a story that you couldn't otherwise tell, which is one of a guy truly examining what he's done with his life. And it's this guy that's lived this great life, done wonderful things, but even in doing so, each of our lives, we make choices that have consequences. We make mistakes. We're put in positions where there's no good options. And this movie explores this sort of idea of life, aging, what we've done, death, and ex on a level to which this is a movie I've watched my entire life. And the older I get, the more powerful this movie becomes as I understand on a far deeper level what's being explored in the movie. When you see it as a, as a young person, it's just kind of an exciting adventure about someone out for revenge and someone not wanting to die. But then as you get older, you realize so much more what's going on and the emotions. And there's little sentences in it um, where Kirk says to his former lover, I stayed away. And it has so much weight and power to it. And that's really at the core of why this movie is something special. Now, with all that said, all the emotion, these intense themes that are explored through these characters that have long dynamics that just make it emotionally resonant beyond just what it is in and of itself, which itself is great. Beyond that, it also has the fun space adventure. For good reason, this is kind of seen as the action-packed Star Trek movie. Now, if you go into this thinking action-packed based off modern standards, it's not. There's not nearly as much stuff in it as you'd expect based on modern standards. But for Star Trek, there's a lot of action in this one. But more importantly, it's so well directed that the movie has a sense of urgency and tension to it throughout the whole movie. And even though it's about two hours long, it moves really fast. I mean, every single time I watch this movie, it amazes me how fast you get to the third act um, because of the way it's just built and the tension and just so wonderfully paced. And it's it's a movie that the two main, uh, the main antagonist and protagonist are never in the same space space together. Khan and Kirk in this movie are never on a planet together in the same room together. They only communicate over a television set together. And even that doesn't happen until 45 minutes into the movie. And even then it doesn't happen all that many times in the movie. It's so well done, so well crafted that you feel it. And the reason that the movie works because you can have all that tension is because Khan is a villain that is so well crafted in that He's a guy that you understand where he's coming from. In that, where the episode of Space Seed ended, he did bad things, so Kirk put him on a planet, but Kirk showed him grace in that he didn't imprison him, he put him on a planet where he could rule there. 
but then things happened and he was left there. So rightfully so, he is very angry at the person that left him there. And rightfully so, why would Kirk go and look at him or check up on him? These are two equally valid points of view, which is what makes for great tension. There's a guy that he's lost everything and all he has is his wrath against the one person he knows to target it at. That makes sense. Likewise, Kirk feels like I, I did what I thought was right and I, I guess I messed up. And so this makes for an incredible tension with you know, Ricardo Montalban giving this performance that has such bravado and just you just see him thinking with everything that he does. Um, it just pulls you into each moment of it. So then, even though they're never on screen together, there's so much tension because they're both equally captivating as they're on this journey, each of them on their own separate journeys that bring them together um, so powerfully. And then likewise, talking about great performances, I mean, this is you know, maybe the best Shatner has ever been. I mean, I haven't seen all of Moore's comedic type stuff, and of course he's an incredible entertainer, so in that sense, maybe he's been done some stuff in the last 15 years that's better than this, but when it comes to dramatic Shatner, um, this is the best. And the director talks about on the comedy Commentary, uh, Nicholas Meyer, how, you know, he would like run through a bunch of takes just to tire out Shatner to try and get kind of a much more um, natural performance out of him. And you, you see that in the movie and it works and um, just so powerful. And likewise, it's a character you've been playing for 15 years, his quintessential role. And much like Captain Kirk, William Shatner was getting older and reflecting on life, thinking back on his career in his own sorts of ways, in his own legacy. And so it's something that he could really connect with in a way that, that's really powerful. And you see it on screen. And then, of course, moving into the other cast in it and of Spock being the most uh, important piece in that of the journey they take him on of seeing him as the person that's the half human, half Vulcan, who chooses to live as a Vulcan, but is in the world of humans, or world dominated by humans, whose best friend is humans. And you see that tension within him so good here. And the tension of why he does what he does, and the reason the finale of this movie is so powerful, where, of course, I'm of course spoiling it for you, for some reason you haven't seen this one, that Spock sacrificed himself for the crew, the reason it's so powerful and the reason that it works so well is because once again, we've seen these characters for the, well, well, some people at the time had seen them, these characters together for 15 years leading up to this. And there's this huge relationship we'd seen on screen that we know that this is exactly what Spock would do. The way he would respond in the situation, even in his death, that's the way that he would respond. Um, and the way so much of it unfolds it makes for such a powerful death scene and powerful moment as all of it unfolds. Um, you know, one of the great screen deaths of all time. And along the way, you've got other characters in here with uh, Christy Alley as Savick as another Vulcan, um, adding a new element to it, a new zest of the rising up um, um, Starfleet officer trying to make their place amongst all the old guard that are trying to feel them out and trying to figure where there's space and all this. So many elements that work so nicely. And then one of the things about this one that I, it gets so overlooked um, is the score by James Horner. It's it's an astounding score. All right, this is like greatest of all time level scores. I mean, just wonderful incredibly powerful music that I don't know why more people don't talk about it as one of the great scores of all time. It's a little, and from my perspective, um, the music from Star Trek movies is incredibly underrated. Even the bad Star Trek movies have amazing scores, every single one of them, and Star Trek II maybe having the best one. Tough to say because they're all so good, and so maybe Star Trek The Motion Picture does because it's the one that they actually used then for Star Trek Next Generation. But Star Trek II, I mean, it, it, is, it is so, so good. Uh, overall, I, I mean, I don't have anything negative I would say about this movie. It's an incredibly well-crafted sci-fi movie. This is the example of how taking a TV show and bringing it to screen, you can do something with that that's incredibly special and a unique type of storytelling that you can't do otherwise, that has emotional resonance that doesn't work otherwise. Perfect example of this would be Star Trek Into Darkness, which tried to copy the third act of Star Trek The Wrath of Khan and reversing it by having Kirk dying. And it doesn't work at all. 
and I like that movie. I'm not one of the critics of it, uh, the you know hater or anything like that. But that ending does not work in that movie because the crew hasn't been established. The relationships haven't been established. Like the relationship between Kirk and Spock in the first movie in the current series is antagonistic and they just sort of become friends at the end. Then you have this one movie where they have some tension between the two of them. So Kirk's sacrifice at the end this is not the same thing as Spock's sacrifice in Star Trek, the, Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, they're, ju they're just not equal. And so it doesn't have the weight. You don't have this incredibly long, in the timeline of the universe, incredibly long relationship, as well as in the realm of actually real life, there was this incredibly long relationship between these characters that made what they did in Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, something very special that's not special in Star Trek into darkness. So overall, this is an amazing movie that if you like sci-fi, uh, I can see where you, if you're younger, you would see this as dated, but this is a very good movie that explores themes of life, death, uh, choices, consequences, uh, the life we could have lived. And especially in this one, kind of learning about Kirk and the, him having a former lover that had a son with him, some sort of these sorts of ideas that are just so big and bold that are explored in a way that you you believe it, you buy it. Um, and add something to what we saw before. This is a perfect example of how to do all of these types of things. A very enjoyable movie, exciting. It's more probably sci-fi thrill and sci-fi action because there's not actually that much action, but the space battles in this are up there with Return of the Jedi as best sci-fi battles of all time. It's not the kinetic action of Star Wars, but it's much more strategic battle of trying to outthink each other, especially the final battle where they can't see each other. It's the best space battle in all of Star Trek. Uh, I love the model works. I love model work. Uh, I think all of it, not all of it. I think the best of it in Wrath of Khan, Return of the Jedi looks better than the CGI stuff. And there's, there's something about it that just works better for me. Um, and they've never recaptured it. Rogue One is getting close. Uh, but what they did with strategic and smoothing around and outthinking each other and just the, the dialogue in the final space battle where, um, you know, Spock's like, you know, he's very brilliant, but he's thinking 2D in a 3D game. However, whatever the line is, that's not the line, but that's the nature of the line. Just things like that where they're outsmarting him. And it's, it's an intelligent way that they outthink him in that they realize the limitations of someone that's never done battle in this sort of way. And so that's the way... All all those sorts of things make it in such an intelligent script, such an intelligent movie. Uh, uh, all the thank yous in the world to Nicholas Meyer, who kind of made this together with Harv Bennett, who died a couple years ago, that just, you know, shocked Star Trek back to life and has given us an incredible gift that I very much appreciate. I'm going to give this one a 10 out of 10. I think only the second or third movie on my channel I've ever given a 10 out of 10. For me, it certainly deserves it. It has turned 35, and for your 35th birthday, Star Trek II, I give you a 10 out of 10. If I'm being honest, I think you should all give it a try and watch it, even if you're a little bit older. You don't, I, I, you don't need to see the previous episodes. You don't need to see Star Trek The Motion Picture. It does work on its own, but the, it's so much more powerful if you do kind of know the backstory and uh, having watched all the stuff before, but it, it's a self-contained story that makes sense in and of itself. Everything you need to know about the plot and stuff you get that within the movie if you want to watch the episode space seed beforehand i would advise doing that it does fill in some information that would be very useful to understand a little bit of what's going on but for the most part it's all kind of in there you know why khan is angry and you know where kirk's coming from how about you what do you think about it tell me down below in the comments section with all that said if you're new to my channel please consider clicking that subscribe button i do movie reviews tv reviews do some ranking videos that I put out every single week, and I got this thing called Masters of Movie Trivia, where I do some movie trivia with other some other YouTubers. But really, I don't want to just talk about movies. I want to talk about movies with you. Join me in the comment section down below, and thank you so much for watching.